I've got to give in to my emotions. But all this seems so useless. Exactly. It's not only useless, dull, unromantic, but unprofitable. That ball, paro, paro, had me fooled for a while, but a <clears throat> I gave you a man. In the early hours of March 3, 1987, Danny Kaye's heart ceased beating, and it was such unbelievable news. The loss of this beloved performer and philanthropist left a void in the entertainment industry and the hearts of many. Danny Kaye was a multi-talented entertainer known for his skills as an actor, singer, dancer, and humanitarian. Now this is just the tip of the iceberg, and you won't believe how this true icon made the world crave his reincarnation. Join us in this video as we look into the life of the iconic Danny Kaye. Early Days Danny was a young boy originally named David Daniel Kaminsky, Born into a world of dreams and challenges in Brooklyn, New York, on a cold January day in 1911. His parents were Ukrainian Jewish immigrants seeking a better life. They left their homeland behind in search of greener pastures. David, popularly known as Danny, was the youngest of three sons. However, he became the beacon of light in their journey for a more comfortable life. As a child, Danny attended the public school 149, a humble institution in East New York, Brooklyn. It was there, in the simple classrooms and amidst curious minds, that he began appealing to his classmates with his songs and jokes, igniting laughter and joy in their hearts. However, his formal education at Thomas Jefferson High School was cut short, and he could not graduate. It seems life had other better plans for him. Tragedy struck when Danny was just a teenager, as he bid farewell to his beloved mother who left this world too soon much earlier than anyone expected. Not a quack, not a quack, not a waddle or a quack, but a glide and a whistle and a snowy wide back. Grief weighed heavily on his young shoulders, and it was during this fragile time that he and his friend Lewis made plans to escape to Florida. With Danny's melodious voice and Lewis's skillful guitar playing, they forged a path surviving by the absolute force of their talents. They'd play these instruments at parties or shows, but destiny beckoned Danny back to the city that never sleeps, New York, where a new chapter awaited him. Danny's father, understanding the delicate nature of his son's journey, did not push him towards traditional paths of work or education. Instead, he granted Danny the space to grow and discover his true abilities, allowing him to blossom into the extraordinary individual he was destined to become. In his youth, Danny had harbored dreams of becoming a surgeon, but the weight of economic challenges prevented him from pursuing that path. Life led Danny on a winding path, where he held various jobs as a soda jerk, an auto insurance investigator, and an office clerk. But each venture seemed to end in disappointment, with him being dismissed from his positions. One such misstep led to a grave error costing the insurance company a significant sum, leaving Danny jobless and burdened by the weight of his mistake. Even a dental office, where he was entrusted with care and responsibility, fell victim to his mischievous nature as he playfully wielded a dental drill on office woodwork, leading to his swift exit. It was during these uncertain times that fate intervened once again, as Danny's life intertwined with that of Sylvia Fine, the daughter of the very dentist whose office he had playfully tampered with. Their encounter occurred during an audition in 1939, and within a year, they became so fond of each other, bound by love and shared dreams. It was in the lively atmosphere of the Catskills, where Danny found his footing as a tumbler, a master of ceremonies in the borscht belt, honing his craft and unleashing his boundless energy to captivate audiences in different ceremonies. But it was in the year 1933 that Danny's fortunes shifted, as he joined the Three Terpsichoreans, a vaudeville dance act that set the stage for his rise to stardom. Adopting the stage name Danny Kay, he embarked on a tour across the United States and Asia, enchanting audiences with the show La Vie Paray. Little did he know that a fateful turn of events awaited him in Osaka, Japan. Nature unleashed its fury upon the city as a typhoon wreaked havoc and chaos. The troops' hotel collapsed under the force of the winds, and even Danny's room was not spared. But all this seems so useless. Exactly. It's not only useless, dull, unromantic, but unprofitable. A piece of the hotel's cornice crashed into his sanctuary. As evening fell and the storm raged on, the audience grew restless and fearful. In a moment of brilliance and desperation, Danny took the stage, clutching a simple flashlight to illuminate his face. With unwavering determination, he sang every song he could recall, pouring his heart and soul into each note. His voice pierced through the darkness, 
resonating with the audience's yearning for respite and hope. At that moment, a legend was born. It was this very experience, trying to connect with audiences who did not share his language that inspired Danny to develop his unique style of performance. Pantomime gestures, whimsical songs, and expressive facial expressions became his tools to bridge the gap between cultures, transcending language barriers to touch the hearts of all who witnessed his artistry. Even in the simplest of moments, like ordering a meal in a foreign land, Danny found himself relying on these universal gestures, flapping his arms and clucking like a chicken to convey his desire for nourishment. His return United States to the United States stormed into another array of challenges. Jobs were scarce, and Danny struggled to secure bookings that would showcase his undeniable talent. In the midst of his confusion and this uncertainty, fate led him to a peculiar job working in a burlesque review alongside the enchanting Sally Rand, a fan dancer. It was during one performance, when fate intervened once again, that the delicate balance of the show was disrupted by a mischievous fly. With a swift decision, he was entrusted with the task of safeguarding the fans, holding them steady in front of Sally's graceful figure. Career Journey Back in 1937, Danny Kaye busted into the film scene with a contract from Educational. He was cast as a manic, a fast-talking Russian in these low-budget comedies alongside rising stars June Allison and Imogene Coca. But sadly, the series came to an abrupt end when the studio shut down in 1938. Now here's an interesting twist. In 1937, while all this was happening, Danny was working in the Catskills under a different name, Danny Colbin. It's like he had a secret identity or something. But don't worry, his talent didn't go unnoticed. In 1939, he had a short-lived Broadway show called The Straw Hat Review, where critics started to take notice of his work. And guess what? Those reviews led to an offer for Danny and his wife Sylvia to perform at a swanky New York City nightclub called La Martinique. Did you know that Sylvia even joined him as his accompanist? And here's where things start to take off. Playwright Moss Hart saw Danny's performance at La Martinique and was so impressed that he cast him in his hit Broadway comedy Lady in the Dark. That was in 1941 when Danny was just 30 years old. He played the role of Russell Paxton and had a show-stopping number called Tchaikovsky and Other Russians. Can you imagine singing the names of Russian composers at breakneck speed without taking a breath? That's some serious and interesting talent right there. The Broadway success continued for Danny in the next season when he starred in Let's Face It, a show about a young man who gets drafted. It seems like he was on a roll, but wait, there's more. In 1944, Danny made his feature film debut in Up in Arms, a technicolor comedy produced by Samuel Goldwyn. And here's a fun fact. Another producer, Robert M. Savini, took advantage of Danny's popularity and put together a patchwork feature called The Birth of a Star, using three of his educational pictures shorts. Now let's take a little detour to the world of radio. From 1945 to 1946, Danny had his own radio show called The Danny K Show on CBS. I've gotta give in to my emotions. It became super popular, and within a year he was ranked fifth in the Radio Daily Popularity Poll, tied with the legendary Jimmy Durante. During that time, Danny was also asked to go on a USO tour after World War II. This meant he had to be away from his radio show for nearly two months, but his friends stepped in as guest hosts. Can you imagine the excitement of seeing Danny Kay live during that tour? He even became the first American actor to visit post-war Tokyo. The guy made history. In 1946, he asked to be released from his radio contract. He made a deal not to accept a regular radio show for a year. However, he did make some limited guest appearances on other radio programs. Time to dwell more on his movies. Danny starred in several films with the talented actress Virginia Mayo in the 1940s. You might recognize some of these classics. The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, The Inspector General, and On the Riviera, just to name a few. But his most iconic film is probably White Christmas, which came out in 1954. It's a holiday favorite that people still watch and love today. Well, you start with a note on the bottom of the piano or in the middle or somewhere. And did you know that Danny's wife, Sylvia Fine, wrote many of his famous tongue-twisting songs? She was a talented writer and lyricist. She even produced films as well. Okay. Let's fast forward to the 1950s. Danny ventured into television and made appearances on shows like See It Now with Edward Murrow, but he didn't stop there. In 1956, he had his own television show called The Secret Life of Danny Kaye. It was a combination of his 50,000-mile tour as a UNICEF ambassador, his music, and of course, his signature humor. That ball, puddle, puddle, had me fooled for a while, but a... <clears throat> 
gave you a bang. But wait, there's more. Danny hosted the 24th Academy Awards in 1952. Can you imagine him on the Oscars stage, cracking jokes and entertaining the crowd? That must have been quite a show. Good news. At 1953, Danny started his own production company called Dina Pictures, named after his daughter. They even expanded into television under the name Belmont Television in the 60s. It's like he was a true entertainment mogul. The Danny Kay Show from 1963 to 1967 was a big hit, winning four Emmy Awards and a prestigious Peabody Award. During this time, he also took on some interesting television roles. He acted as the host for the CBS telecasts of MGM's The Wizard of Oz. Can you imagine Danny Kay introducing Dorothy and her friends on television? It must have been quite a treat for viewers. He even made appearances on popular shows like What's My Line? And Here's Hollywood. He knew how to keep himself busy. In the 1970s, while performing in the Richard Rogers musical Two by Two, Danny tore a ligament in his leg. But he didn't let that stop him. He continued with the show, performing in a wheelchair with his leg in a cast. In 1976, he played Geppetto in a television musical adaptation of Pinocchio with Sandy Duncan in the title role. It must have been amazing to see Danny bring the beloved character to life. He also portrayed Captain Hook in a musical version of Peter Pan, starring alongside Mia Farrow. Can you imagine the chemistry between those two talented actors? Danny Kaye's television appearances didn't stop there. He made guest appearances on popular shows like The Muppet Show and The Cosby Show. It's always fun to see beloved celebrities interact with iconic characters or share the screen with other talented performers. But Danny Kaye wasn't just known for his entertainment career. He was also a passionate ambassador for UNICEF. He used his fame and influence to raise awareness and support for children in need around the world. And um, I, I became what I think I had to become because it's the best means for self-expression that I have. That's truly commendable. In recognition of his contributions, Danny received two Academy Awards. He was honored with an Academy Honorary Award in 1955 for his versatile talents, and in 1982, he received the Gene Hersholt Humanitarian Award. It's incredible to see how he used his platform to make a positive impact on the world. Even in his later years, Danny continued to entertain audiences and host special events. In 1980, he hosted and performed in the 25th anniversary celebration of Disneyland, and 1982, he hosted the opening celebration for Epcot. These primetime television events brought joy and excitement to viewers across the country. Danny Kaye's legacy as a talented actor, singer, dancer, and comedian is undeniable. But beyond his entertainment career, he will always be remembered for his humanitarian work and his dedication to making the world a better place. His contributions to both the entertainment industry and the lives of countless children will never be forgotten. There are two prerequisites that we ask for when we come to do a pension fund. Career in Music Danny Kaye had a fascinating career in music, showcasing his versatility as a performer. Despite claiming that he couldn't read music, he was said to have perfect pitch, which is quite impressive. He had his distinctive style, easily transitioning from outrageous novelty songs to tender ballads. In 1945, he hosted his own CBS radio program, where he performed hit songs like Dinah and Minnie the Moocher. He had a knack for entertaining and captivating audiences with his singing talents. In 1947, he teamed up with the Andrews sisters on Decca Records, and together they produced the popular hit Civilization, Bongo, 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 which reached number three on the Billboard charts. This successful collaboration led to more recordings, including rhythmically comical songs like The Woody Woodpecker Song, and Put Him in a Box, Tie Him with a Ribbon, and Throw Him in the Deep Blue Sea. They even recorded festive tunes like A Merry Christmas at Grandmother's House and All I Want for Christmas is My Two Front Teeth. I'm Hans Christian Anderson, Anderson, that's who. <whistles> Kay released his debut album, Columbia Presents Danny Kay, in 1942 featuring songs accompanied by Maurice Abravanel and Johnny Green. Although the album was reissued in 1949, it didn't gain as much popularity as his later kids' records and comedy routines. In 1950, Kay had another chart hit with the Decca single, I've Got a Lovely Bunch of Coconuts. He continued to release albums, including Danny Kay Entertains in 1953, which featured songs from his Broadway musical, Lady in the Dark. One of Kay's notable musical achievements was his involvement in the film Hans Christian Andersen. He sang two songs from the movie Thumbelina and Wonderful Copenhagen, which became hits on the charts. Wonderful Copenhagen even reached number five on the UK singles chart. Havana, na, na, Havana, na, na. 
Throughout the 1950s and 1960s, Kay recorded with various record labels, and in 1956, he signed a three-year contract with Capitol Records. He released the single Love Me Do with the B-side CIU CIU Bella, inspired by a child he met in an Italian hospital during his UNICEF mission. As a lifelong Dodgers fan, Kay recorded a song called the D-O-D-G-E-R-S song, Oh Really? No, O'Malley, in 1962, which became popular during the Dodgers' pennant chase that year. He was friends with Leo DeRocher and often traveled with the team. In the 1960s and 1970s, Kay took on the role of a conductor and regularly led world-famous orchestras, despite not being musically trained or able to read sheet music. He conducted with his own unique style, sometimes incorporating unpredictable antics like trading the baton for a fly swatter during performances. His conducting ability were highly praised by renowned conductors like Zubin Mehta and Dimitri Metropolis. Kay's conducting engagements often served as charity fundraisers, and he raised over $5 million in support of musician pension funds throughout his career. His love for music and his ability to connect with orchestras and audiences through his conducting skills added yet another dimension to his already impressive repertoire. Personal Life Danny met his beautiful wife and collaborator, Sylvia Fine, while working on an off-Broadway show in 1939. Sylvia, an audition pianist, discovered that Danny had previously worked for her father, who was a dentist. They didn't meet until then, despite growing up just a few blocks apart in Brooklyn. Exactly. I should be leaving now. Oh. He's going out. Danny proposed to Sylvia over the telephone while he was working in Florida. That was such a virtual proposal like most people do today. They got married in Fort Lauderdale on January 3, 1940. Their marriage lasted a lifetime, with the exception of a separation in 1947 and 1948, when Danny had a brief involvement with actress Eve Arden. The couple had one child, a daughter named Dina, who was born on December 17, 1946. Interestingly, when Dina was very young, she didn't enjoy watching her father perform because she didn't understand that people were supposed to laugh at his comedic antics. Danny expressed in an interview that he and Sylvia would support Dina. And he said to them, I would like to have my behind, you know, fitted. In pursuing whatever career path she chose, there have been rumors and claims surrounding Danny Kaye's personal life, including an alleged affair with actor Laurence Olivier. However, no substantial evidence has been published to support these claims. Even after thorough research conducted by journalists and biographers, no hint of an affair between Kay and Olivier was found in the extensive archives of Olivier's letters and memorabilia. In terms of political affiliations, Danny Kay was a Democrat and supported Adlai Stevenson's campaign during the 1952 presidential election. He also had personal connections within the entertainment industry, such as being the godfather of actress Mary Louise Weller. The flip side of his career. And this is not an ordinary encyclopedia of music. What's different about this except that it's taking longer? Don't interrupt, Mr. Setter. In his later years, Danny Kaye developed a passion for cooking and became an accomplished chef. He specialized in Chinese and Italian cuisine and had a custom-made Chinese restaurant installed at the rear of his house. The kitchen and dining area were built around it. Kay's Chinese stove was specially designed with metal rings for the burners to concentrate the heat, and a trough with circulating ice water helped keep the intense heat tolerable for those cooking. He learned Chinese cooking techniques from Johnny Kahn's restaurant in San Francisco and Cecilia Chang at her Mandarin restaurants. During the 1970s, Kay even taught Chinese cooking classes at a Chinese restaurant in San Francisco. Such was his expertise in cooking that the theater and demonstration kitchen under the library at the Culinary Institute of America's Hyde Park campus was named after him. Apart from his culinary pursuits, Danny Kay also developed an interest in aviation and became a pilot. His friend, choreographer Michael Kidd, inspired his interest in flying, as Kidd had recently earned his private pilot's license. Kay began training for his pilot's license in 1959 and flew various types of aircraft, from single-engine light planes to multi-engine jets. He even received a type rating in a Learjet and was named vice president of the Learjet company by Bill Lear as an honorary title. Kay's passion for flying extended beyond his personal pursuits, 
In his days with UNICEF, he helped them by flying a Learjet to 65 cities in five days. He also supported various flying projects and served as the honorary chairman of the Las Vegas International Exposition of Flight in 1968. In addition to his culinary and aviation ventures, Danny Kay had business interests. In 1958, he formed K. Smith Enterprises with Lester Smith. The company owned a chain of radio stations, a concert promotion company, a video production company, and a recording studio. Kay also had an extensive knowledge of baseball and was a skilled second baseman. Kay and Lester Smith were part of an investment group that was awarded the 13th franchise in the American League, which became the Seattle Mariners. However, their ownership percentages were reduced when George Argyros purchased the majority stake in the team in 1981. Eventually, Kay sold all of his business interests to Lester Smith's family in 1985. Up till now, we're yet to find out why. End of journey. Danny Kay, the beloved actor, comedian, and humanitarian, passed away on March 3, 1987, at the age of 74. His death was a significant loss to the entertainment industry and the world. The circumstances surrounding his final moments were indeed tragic. Danny Kay had been battling various health issues, including heart disease and diabetes, for many years. In early 1987, he underwent surgery to remove a benign tumor from his left leg, which initially appeared successful. However, complications arose shortly after the operation, and Kay's health began to deteriorate rapidly. In his final moments, Kay was rushed to Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, where he was placed on life support. Despite the efforts of the medical team, his condition continued to worsen, and he eventually slipped into a coma. Sadly, Kay's family had to make the difficult decision to remove him from life support. He passed away peacefully, surrounded by his loved ones. The news of Danny Kay's passing was met with an outpouring of grief from his fans and colleagues around the world. His contributions to the entertainment industry and his humanitarian efforts had touched the lives of many, and his loss was deeply felt. Memories and Legacy After Danny Kay's passing, his body was cremated, and his ashes were interred in the foundation of a bench at Kensico Cemetery in Valhalla, New York. The bench is adorned with friezes representing significant aspects of Kay's life, including a baseball and bat, an aircraft, a piano, a flower pot, musical notes, and a chef's toque. His name, birth, and death dates are inscribed on the toque. In October 1987, the United Nations held a memorial tribute to Danny Kay at its New York headquarters, honoring his contributions and humanitarian work. The Sylvia and Danny Kay Playhouse at Hunter College in New York opened in 1988, made possible by a generous $1 million gift from Sylvia Kay, his wife. Although time has dimmed Kay's legacy to some extent, certain works continue to endure. According to David Koenig, Kay's films like White Christmas and The Court Jester have stood the test of time and are considered classics. The Court Jester has gained a reputation as one of the greatest comedies of all time. Would you stop worrying about Mr. Wallace? We like to take care of our friends. Danny Kay received several honors and recognitions for his philanthropic work and contributions to the arts. He was knighted by Queen Margaret II of Denmark on November 10, 1983, receiving the cross of the Knight of the Danebrog, first class, in recognition of his work with UNICEF and his ties to Denmark. This was significant as Kay had portrayed Hans Christian Andersen in a 1952 film. He was made a Chevalier of the French Legion of Honor on February 24, 1986, in appreciation of his efforts for UNICEF. Posthumously, on June 23, 1987, Kay was presented with the Presidential Medal of Freedom by President Ronald Reagan. The award was accepted by his daughter, Dina. Also, in 1988, he was posthumously inducted into the American Theatre Hall of Fame. UNICEF established the Danny Kay International Children's Award in his honor. It was a children's European singing competition that aired annually between 1988 and 1992 and was hosted by Kay's widow, Sylvia. From his early days in films and Broadway to his success on radio and television, Danny Kay left an indelible mark on the world of entertainment. With his comedic talent, musical prowess, and charismatic presence, he continues to be remembered as a beloved entertainer. And the best part? We can still enjoy his timeless performances today. So the next time you watch White Christmas or find yourself humming one of his catchy tunes, remember to salute the life and journey of the one and only Danny Kay. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.